Hello everyone, today we are trying to generate NDVI and EVI time series in Google Auth Engine. Um, it won't be a comprehensive guide, um, but a very soft and quick overview of the process. And all these codes have been copied from the tutorials available from developers.google.com. So first, uh, to begin with, we search uh, the data sets. Uh, we type send on two, and we see there are two different data blocks uh, here we have here. Uh, Sentinel 2 MSI multispectral instrument level 2A and Sentinel 2 MSI multispectral instrument level 1C. Uh, so the difference between these two uh, data blocks, uh, 2A and 1C, is that 2A relates with uh, bottom up atmosphere, and there are a number of additional bands here. Uh, so the brief information is given here. Uh, so the link to the Sentinel 2 user handbook is also here. Uh, we can see different bands here, and we also can see these properties here. And similarly, we can either copy uh, this code snippet or import uh, this image collection. So if we import this uh, image collection, we get this at the top of the code editor, and we can change the variable name as well. So uh, for selecting the area of interest, I've already done this one. Now it's very easy. We can go to humidity tool and create the uh, SEP as much um, as much as we are concerned with the uh, geometry. We can have we can draw any SEP uh, as we like. So I've already done this process. Um, so let me uncomment the first chunk of codes here. So for this um, process, uh, for Sentinel 2, uh, we are creating a negative buffer to minimize uh, the uncertainties uh, involved in georeferencing of Sentinel images. And one of the pixels uh, within the plot are selected, and we are adding the layers, uh, the first layer uh, as the border and the second name as the buffer. For this, we write uh, capital M here, map dot add with capital layer, capital L and layer, map dot add layer, and we write our variable name, and inside this color record, we have some parameters involved for visualizing, and then after we write the name of that layer. So if we run this, uh, if we run this, we have uh, two different layers being shown here. Uh, one is the buffer, and one is the buffer. So map to center object is uh, making sure that if we uh, go somewhere else, for example, and if we run this, it makes us the it appears at the center. So for selecting uh, the image, let me uncomment it again. Okay. And after here we have um, image collection, and we want to make sure the cloud present in them in the images are less than 10%. And we want to select from the date wise from 2020, 1st of January to uh, the last of the uh, last month of the year. And we write all this inside the uh, Apple stove or the single codes here. Yeah. And then after we want to select uh, one of those images or uh, those uh, images, let me say those images within this uh, area, which is our area of interest. So we had this neg uh, negative buffer of light in that one. Similarly, uh, we have also have here um, some masking of light. So here what we are doing is we are uh, masking or we can selecting one of those pixels uh, termed as vegetation and swell. And we want to mask those pixels which are not uh, vegetation or swell. And we are writing this function so that we only, um, we only uh, want to identify uh, vegetation and bare swells. So we have object mask, uh, applying this mask. It's very easy to apply the marks here. We write dot map and the function name here. And writing the function is very uh, similar to other programming languages. For example, here we have written the function, uh, and we begin 
with the name of the function and we select the parameters that would be involved within this and we have some uh, uh, selection from SCL that is the band here and we want to make sure if that is equal to four and if it's equal to four that would be v vz uh, and then after five or if that is equal to five that it is well and we want to mask all those others which are not there so that's the process and we are applying this uh, into our image collection uh, similar to that one we also have the function to uh, mask clouds so here and uh, masking the clouds um, leads to with the uh, hiding or unmasking of those uh, two different class series and other clouds so here we are uh, working with the left hand operator uh, and and that is again to um, process is again to um, hide or mark those clouds involved. Uh, so um, this function is again uh, will be applied later to check uh, what would be the difference. So for calculating uh, the NDVI, we have been creating the function named um, at NDVI, we're selecting the maze, and we uh, there is already a function in Google of Engine that is normalized difference, and we select two different bands, red and NIR band, and that band would be added to all the, uh, with all the other images or other bands uh, in our image collections. So uh, that is how it is working. So if we run this, um, so I'm, and so we have written here with the s2 dot map and ndvi and after running this it would go um, to be added uh, to the bottom of the bands with all the bands so if we see here we have mazes here and in the bands we have a new band that is nd so that is our ndvi so for creating the um ndvi time series here we are creating a new variable name and after that we are trying to ui.chart the image that series by region this is the main function working here uh, we work on our image collections uh, area of interest and we are uh, reducing it by mean and then after we have bands and scales involved and after that we use that to uh, plot uh, our NV time series, we are setting the chart type as line chart, and we are setting the series name of the, our, our line chart to be as answer filter only. Uh, we will see here uh, where it comes. And after we have different options uh, written here, for example, we have the title and what would be there in horizontal and vertical axis. And we finally print the plot. So here we have the um, it's working. So yeah, the SL filter only as that sits region name appears at the top, and we can see different. Um, uh, you can see the chart being clearly highlighting, showing um, each and each and every values over the time. And also, uh, we want to try once if there would be any difference between um, with masking the class and without not masking it without not masking the cloud. So uh, here we have same process again with the uh, cloud masking of the clouds. So as far as I see, there is no such um, differences. But if the um, generally if the area is very large, if our area of interest is very large, that might be. Uh, quite useful. However, I think the as our AF interest is very small, uh, no such uh, differences um, exist here. So again, to add this um, NDVI as a new layer, we select the our band here that is NDVI, and we want to select one of the median values, and we have different uh, colors uh, as the palettes. And after that, we do, we do the same process that we did before. 
that is map dot pair with capital M and capital L. And we want to make sure that is only from the our area of interest. And then after we want to have minimums and maximum highlighted and with the colors involved. And finally, we would name the layer's name. So if we run this one, uh, we would get the new layer uh, that is NDVI here. So we have here NDVI and other layers involved. So for calculating the uh, EVI, uh, we have minimal process involved. As before, uh, we write the function here. And our parameter is image. Uh, we have image expression. So this is the uh, formula involved uh, for calculating the uh, EVI. Uh, the additional thing is that it has a new band that is blue band involved in it and the formula is um, involved with other numbers like 25 into you subtract here um, two bands and after we have here uh, some other constants involved uh, in the process so if we run this it will do the same process as we did before uh, it's going to add a new band uh, to the image collections so we also do the same process for the thing. Um, it should be here. It's not NDVI map, it should be NDVI map. And here we can see um, EVI here. So we might want to know uh, what's the value of, um, what's the value of EVI and NDVI in that area for that we can go to inspector and in that inspector area if you click here you get the NDVI and the values so if we click anywhere uh, in our maze or in our area of interest so we get the NDVI and NDVI values so now we want to create the line chart uh, not just for um, NDVI, but as appearing as both the EVI and NDVI uh, time shifts appearing in the same graph. So for this, um, we select the two bands of ours that we constant, the constant in the same name added at the bottom uh, of the image collections. Uh, we select them as indices. And here we are using ui.chart.image.series. And so there are plenty of um, different um, charts uh, making functions. For example, here we are using ui.chart.image.series and now we used uh, something else, ui.chart.image.series by reason. So there are different um, parameters involved in creating them. So here we are um, using the indices as our image collection and we want to select the region. And again, we are using it by median and we have scale and we want to select the series names as NDVI and EBI because they are the two bands involved. And we have here the different chart style involved and it says bottom right, it would appear somewhere here. And we have the height and white involved. And finally, we want to add the chart. So also we have some other chart style involved, uh, the title, original axis, what we want to have there and also in the vertical axis. So it's, it's uh, after that, we want to uh, apply the chart options uh, as a set up set options as chart style. So if you run this, we get the NDVI and EVI. So I'm sure it's, it's here. So to make it last, we can click here. And it appears in our next tab. So, um, so here we have the chart here, and the first one is NDVI, and the blue one is EVI. So um, EVI is um, generally reduces uh, atmospheric influences, and EVI is EVI is sensitive to uh, canopy structure. EVI is sensitive to sensitive to canopy structure and any guy in most cases related to chlorophyll. Uh, so this is the uh, time series from Nepal. So in Nepal, 
uh, we have rice plantation time from after June, generally after June, and you can see uh, NDVI um, increasing here. And later, uh, later uh, in the months, it's decreasing probably due to harvesting uh, season. And in other season, we have also have other crops such as maize, and probably this might be the reason uh, why you see the NDVI and DVI increasing in February, from the beginning of February to other months, February to March, so, and it's getting prill and decreasing at a prill. But there might be other reasons as well, but this is the general trend in Nepal. And as you can see, there is a some gap between here. I'm not sure why is it that. Maybe um, it's due to the, I don't know, it's, it might be some other reasons, but overall, this is the NDVI and EVI uh, time series. So um, I think this is uh, absolutely not the uh, best content. However, this was to say that all these uh, quotes have been copied from uh, other sources and just to practice and we have um, we can we can just copy it and change the different things here and after editing then we can create this um, this line graphs so I hope this was uh, helpful uh, for you if you're watching um, so thank you for watching